to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. Season 2 of House of the Dragon is here. We waited a whole year and let me tell you, that Targaryen bloodline is back. So you got to choose a side. Are you black or are you green? If you know me, I'm rolling with the original Damon Targaryen. So you know what side we on. We got the whole cast. Day Day. We got Riri, a.k.a. Rhaenyra. We got Allison. We got Otto Hightower. We got all the people back except for King Viserys. R.I.P. But before we jump into this and we break down the best show on television in 2024, if you like House of the Dragon recaps, I will be doing live after shows on Tuesdays. Also, then hit your subscribe button and turn your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button and we're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So maybe House of the Dragon to get us some new subscribers. And hey, this is what we've been waiting on. Season two is here. Let's jump into it. No more talking. This is the recap of episode one. Season two. House of the Dragon. We start the episode off with Rhaenyra's son, Jaceres. Now, he's touring a wall with Kreeg and Stark, and how they ended up on this wall is because one out of ten men is selected to go out there. And if you reach into a bag and you pull out a black stone, then you have to go watch the wall. Now, Jaceres and Cregan, they're going up there and they're talking, and Jace is saying, listen, hey, Cregan, I need you to commit some members of your army to come help Rhaenyra, because at this point, they're at it with the other Targaryens that took over the house. Remember Allison and Viserys? They had two kids, Aemon and Aegon, and they're over in charge. Well, they need some soldiers to go to war with them. Now, there's some urgent news coming from Dragonstone, and Kreeg and Stark did say he can commit 2,000 soldiers to come help fight this war that is about to happen. Lord Corlys is back around, but if you remember, at the end of Season 1, he almost was unalive, so he's walking with a cane right now. And as he goes down to the docks, he's looking at his old ship because he was the ally that had all the fleets of boats that would go out there and cover the waters. Now, when he goes down into the docks, he sees his boat and he's wondering how it survived, how it made it out of all those clashes that went down at the end of season one. Now, there's a guy named Alan, and you see him working on the shipyard, and Corlys is saying, hey, I heard you're the one that pulled me out of the boat. And Alan is saying that was just my duty. It wasn't like I was trying to or planning to. It's just what I signed up for to serve you. And I would always get you. Now we do hear Corley say, thank you for that, Alan. And for this, I'll always be in your debt. Now it's one thing for someone to owe you, but for a Lord to owe you and be in debt to you, that's highly regarded. The first time we see Allison and Sir Kristen, well, they're in her living quarters, and instead of him standing next to her and being her guard, her protector, he's on one knee, and um, he's having supper early, if you know what I mean. Now, they definitely aren't supposed to be doing this. One, because he serves her. Two, she's royalty. But they do have a meeting that they have to show up for at the high table, and of course, her father is there. He's been the hand for Viserys, and now he's the hand for Aegon, her first son. As they head into this meeting, Otto was already in here, and he's noticing something is off with Allison and Sir Kristen by the way that they walk in. Now, he doesn't say nothing at first, but then Lord Aegon walks in. He walks in with his son. He sits his son down because he's trying to teach him what it's like to be next in line to become king. Now, while they're in here, <laughs> his son starts bothering the coin. Now, the coin is like the treasure of the whole land, and he keeps taking his ball off of his plate. And he's like, hey, hey, hey. But Aegon sees this and says, hey, is my son bothering you? Is the prince bothering you? Give him a piggyback ride. And everyone was like, hey, not right now, Aegon. But Aegon's the king, and you know he's still young, so he's doing whatever he really wants to at this point. Aegon is listening to what Otto was talking about, but he's like, that's dumb. Now his brother Aemon comes in. You hear Allison say he doesn't have anywhere at this table because he's not next in line. We got the king, his brother, Aegon, and then his sons. So he's basically in the same position that Day Day was in with King Viserys. Now, you do hear Aegon say, no, he's our best sword, meaning he's our best fighter. He has a dragon, and he's been doing this for years. Now, if you remember, he lost his eye because of Rhaenyra's son back when they were little. So he's looking at the map. He's like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go in. We're going to attack this way. This is the best way to take them out. No questions asked. After this meeting, Larry's he pulls Allison off to the side and he's telling her, listen, it's some quirky stuff going around right now. And I just want to let you know, 
I'm staying on the lookout. Now, you remember, he's always been around since King Viserys. He knows the ins and outs of this whole place. He made some plays. You may think they were like backstabbing. Whether you like them or not, for the Greens, he's looking out for Allison because he's always looking for an opportunity to make it back to the top. But what he tells her is, hey, I'm picking you a whole new staff because we can't trust anybody with this war looming. So I got you a whole new staff. And we even see Allison when she goes to take a bath. She tells everyone to get out because she's listening to what he said. And she's hesitant about people working around her because you can't trust anybody during this war. We see Rhaenyra and she's been sitting on top of the hill. She's been flying around ever since the incident that happened to her son. Now, while she's on top of the hill, she looks down on the coast and there's some fishermen down there. And it looks like they came upon a dragon wing. And when she flies down there, she notices that it's her son's dragon and his cloak. So she sits here and you can already know what's racing through her mind at this point. As a mother, knowing that your kid is unalive by some people who were once family members of you, revenge is the only thing you want and you want it now. Lord Aegon holds a town hall meeting. This is where you can come up and tell the Lord what's going on within the kingdom that you need help with. The first guy comes up and he says, well, Lord, he's nervous. Um, my sheep you guys took from me and uh, I need those back because it's about to be winter and we won't survive. Now, Aegon, he's like, OK, we'll give you your sheep back. But Otto Hightower steps in and says, no, we can't give the sheep back because if you do that, then everyone else is going to want their livestock back. So Aegon says. We'll go ahead and keep that because the most important thing is to feed the dragons in case we go to war against the blacks. The next person up is a blacksmith and he says the price of steel has went up. Lord, can we get our money up front? And Lord Aegon says, we definitely will pay you guys up front because without your swords, without your weapons, we won't be able to fight. So at least somebody gets a win in this situation. We know what Laurie's is about opportunist any way that he can gain some traction with what he wants he'll do it so what he does is after this town hall meeting he tells Aegon hey let me have a word with you lord and he pulls him off to the side and what he starts to do is plant a seed in his ear your grandfather Otto Hightower well he was Viserys hand his whole life he was trying to control him basically saying you need to start doing what you want to do and not listening to Otto Viserys had that problem. Your father, he had the same exact problem listening to Otto. And look how that turned out. That's because Larry's is trying to get some kind of leverage and get on the good side. So he'll be in the praises. There are a couple of ships out to sail. And Damon sends his people out there to go ahead and board them and look for any stowaways, spies, anything you can think of that isn't under Damon's role. Now, they do find a stowaway up under there. And it's a lady. And when we see her, she's saying, last time you see me, it was two of them. Her name is Masera. Now, they bring her in to talk to Damon. And Damon's looking at her, and he's thinking, wait a minute. You were messing with Otto. You were giving them information. And she's saying, I don't have any loyalty to them. Everything I was doing was just transactional. But for Damon, this is considered trading. You're a traitor. So he's saying, lock her up. And you know the guy that he's telling her to lock her up? Remember, he had a twin. But he left the Targaryens, the Greens, and came over to the Blacks. Rhaenyra shows back up later on that night. And her and Damon they have a quick talk before she goes over to the table and lets everyone know, I don't care what happens. My son is unalived. I want Aemon, and I want him now. I want him unalive. A son for a son. No more games are being played with them over there in the greens that took our land from us. Damon goes back to talk to Masseria. He gets the information that she had and he takes that. Now he ends up going over to Dragonstone and when he gets here, he finds one of the guardsmen and he offers him some money. And what he does, he takes him over to this guy they call Cheese. Now this guy Cheese, there's a rat problem in the castle. So Damon tells him, I have half now and half later. If you go in there and unalive the prince, silver hair with an eye patch, it shouldn't be hard. So cheese and blood, they're going to go through these tunnels. They're going to unalive them 
and Damon is going to pay him because this is what Rhaenyra wants. As blood and cheese go through the castle, they notice that the king is in here. He's getting drunk with some of his associates. And Cheese, the rat hunter, he tells Blood, don't say nothing. Put your head down. Now, he's been in here setting traps, so he knows his way around through all of these tunnels because he's the only person that can allegedly just do this. But now that they made it past him, he doesn't want to go up to the next floor where the royals are. But Blood says, you need to take me up there or I'm going to unalive you right here. Take the gold and get the gold when I leave after I finish this mission. Once they get upstairs, things start falling apart. Blood starts setting traps. Cheese goes into the other room. And well, he runs into the queen, Helena. And when they get in there, he has a knife to her throat. And now the task needs to be completed. They need to unalive Aemon. But the only problem is they didn't pay attention to the description. Damon said the prince, silver hair with an eye patch. They went in here and they're looking at Helena's kids who have silver hair, whose father is Aegon. Wrong kids, wrong princes. Now they're in here and they're threatening the queen. They're saying which one is the boy. They're thinking that this is Aemon, but no, it's not. These are Aegon's kids. And well, they unalive the oldest one. And Helena, she grabs the other kid and she runs up out the room. And where does she go? Straight to Queen Allison's room. Not only did Blood and Cheese mess up this assassination and unalive the wrong kid, well, now Helena knows that Allison is messing with Sir Kristen and the baby is unalive. Now, who's going to answer to this? Aegon is in there getting drunk. Amon is in there talking to Sir Kristen about the next plan that they were going to do. Everything is just crumbling right in front of us. But one thing we can say. The blacks, they have a hand up right now. The greens, they're going to fire back. And the war is officially about to begin. All right, there you go. Episode one of House of the Dragons. Let me know, are you team black or are you team green? And did they mess it up? Is Damon going to get in trouble for blood and cheese unaliving the wrong prince? Let me know what you think. I'm ODIJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. It's going to be an amazing season. We're on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So, hey, if you like House of the Dragons, if you like breakdowns and recaps, this is the place to be. This is the show of 2024. Hit that like button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.